Right then. Um, well, let's just do the um, the injuries. We know you had yeah. a, a couple in the uh, the match at the weekend. Uh, how are, uh, are Andy and Tommy? Um, Andy will be about two to three weeks, so not too bad. Tommy will be a bit longer, but he doesn't need surgery, so it'll be a it'll be a bit of a longer one for him. Um, so I'm not really going to put any time frame on that at the moment. But disappointing for for both of them because they've uh, you know Tommy's our leading scorer this year, and he's had a really <laughs> really positive breakthrough season um, so yeah shame for him but uh, um, you know it's, it's something that we'll deal with and on the positive side of things I know Thomas has been back and, and training yeah. how close is he to being in a squad well I suppose there's a possibility that he could be on the bench within uh, within two weeks uh, but in terms of starting he'll need to he'll need to come through um, quite a considerable amount of training for him to be uh, considered able to start but uh, yeah it'd be good to have him uh, back involved to use as a sub but obviously if, if, we, if we needed to make a defensive change early in the game that wouldn't be an option for us but uh, yeah good to get him back and he, he, he trained well yesterday he's had a, a day inside today so we need to break up his, um, his training schedule um, so, but he, he did well yesterday. You do have attacking options, but losing a couple of them at a time yeah. when you're, you're struggling to score goals is far from ideal. Well, it, it, yeah, maybe. But I mean, we've got we've got uh, players who can who can step in there. Um, you know, we we uh, we changed our formation during the game last week, and and we feel that we've got players who can come in there and and. Uh, Give the give the team still balance with with having um, the attacking players that we already had on there, but you know it, it does put a bit more emphasis on on players like Naki and Antoine now, um, in particular, uh, because you know they're our recognised strikers. Uh, Sam Bell's obviously the sort of um, player that's been in and around the squad yeah. and, and had a few minutes. Is there anybody else close, or are you looking at those three for the for the next couple of weeks? Yeah, and those and. You know, Mark Sykes has played a lot of his football for us at wing back, but he's he's played in four three three as a as a one of the uh, either front players or one of the attacking midfield players. So there are options for us, yeah. And in terms of options, you, you mentioned sort of formations, and I think people can get hung up on that. But is that in your mind to to look at that having stuck with three at the back, but done so well in the second half of the weekend? It's a possibility, yeah. Uh, as we go into the weekend, it's it's something that uh, you know we, we, we've talked about this week. But um, really, it'll be about the balance of the side and uh, how we feel it is best to go uh, at Birmingham and try and beat them. Because you know formations do matter, but actually yeah. just being on the, the the front foot and, and having that aggression that you, you showed in spades in the second half, mm -hmm. it doesn't almost doesn't matter what the formation is if you do that. Well, I think we've proved that this season early on in the season and and in lots of our games that results haven't gone our way so notably the the Sheffield United at home and the Watford game at home where our our you know regardless of the, uh, the formation that we played our intent was there and uh, those games those results didn't go the way that we wanted them to but the performances were great so um, but certainly playing 4-3-3 it means you've got um, players in wide areas higher up the pitch you know, without putting too much emphasis on the wing back so you know when when we play with a, a back three with wing backs then you know it's important that they get up and down so every every uh, formation has its strengths and, and potential weaknesses and it, I guess the response from the crowd particularly that second half when they saw you on the front foot and really mm. pushing was absolutely there and, and given results it must be key for, for those players to go out and, and try and play that way without going too gung-ho look the, the players are as keen to change the results as as anybody else is you know we we know that our results especially at home have been have been disappointing um, not all the performances have been disappointing so uh, I think for the players, they, you know, they they need the the, the fans to, to get behind them, and but of course the fans need us um, to give them what they're looking for. So, um, 
you know, we, we always strive to do that. It's never, uh, I don't think we've, the results have been, yeah, they've been disappointing, but um, uh, in terms of um, where we are with the group of players that we've got, I think that the players are giving an awful lot. So we'll just continue <laughs> to do that. And we have to make our own fortunes change. That's the, that's the big um, factor in this. You're right, a lot of the performances have been good. Probably the, the matchup at St Andrews was one of the ones which wasn't so no, great this season. It certainly wasn't. It was, yeah, we've been talking about that as staff this morning. And there, there have only been a, a, a couple of games this season which, are, which we've really uh, not been... Uh, <laughs> Not been there, not been present. Uh, Birmingham away was a was a real low point for us, um, and yeah, it's uh, is it about putting that right? It's just about making sure that we get the performance right on 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 Saturday. That's that's the big thing. Um, how people want to look at that as you know, uh, we owe it to ourselves. We owe it to uh, our fans. Of course, we do anyway. Um, but we certainly didn't give ourselves a chance of of getting anything from that game because we defended set plays really poorly on that day. Um, and just in terms of the squad for that one, <coughs> we know that you're looking to try and do a bit of business if you can in January. Um, Chris Martin hasn't been involved for a few weeks. Is he one of those players who you would say may be available if he wanted to move on? He's a, look, he's a player that uh, um, he knows exactly where he stands and... Um, as do a, a, a number of players, but look, what's also important is that we, that we, you know, we we're not going to cut our nose off to spite our face, so, so to speak. We have to, um, we have to remain competitive in in uh, in the re during the rest of the season. So, you know, at the moment, with with injuries being as they are, you you'll you'll see how you'll see from selection the direction that we're going in, but. We've had inquiries about about players, but there's been it, it just remains that there's been inquiries. There, there've been nothing. Uh, there's been tentative inquiries, but not a lot going on really. And um, I think it's, it indicates where football feels it is at the moment at this level. You know, in the championship, there are a lot of clubs uh, are facing similar um, scenarios in terms of coming to terms with the financial aspects of, of uh, <laughs> life post-COVID, if, uh, if you will. And, and there is a changing climate financially. So it's understandable that people aren't doing business particularly quickly. Um, and, and so because we're in, in a scenario at the moment where we need to move players before we can bring players in, uh, it, it appears other people are very much in the same position. So it, it just means that um, progress is slower in, in, in that regard. Does it almost need one domino to fall and then a lot of clubs will be in a position to, to maybe move at that point? I, I don't know whether that will be the case. It, it, it could happen late in the window, you know, which is, is a bit of an irritant, really, because um, you know you, we've, we're already two weeks in, so that's two weeks we could have players available but look we, we just we're realistic about our own circumstances and so there's no point um, going on too much about it it's it, yeah it, it it's frustrating that we would like to we would like to um, develop the squad further but at the moment we're we're in a position where you know we still have to be patient in those regards and get the best out of the players that we currently have. Um, unfortunately, again, we, we, we've, had, we've had a number of young players um, breaking into the side over the last season and a half, and, and, and they've done particularly well, and it's, it, it's, been, uh, well, it's been needed. <laughs> uh, so so it's, it's good for us in that sense. You know, the club's in a very healthy position in that sense. You know, the squad has value now which is uh, another real positive for us as a football club. Um, it doesn't, it doesn't uh, address necessarily people's desires for us to um, move the squad forward quicker by making changes. But, you know, we're hopefully, you know, the, the summer will hopefully be a watershed moment um, in those sorts of terms. So um, I know it's fans probably uh, get a bit tired of uh, us asking and me asking them to be patient, but it, it, it's, it's 
it's what we have to do at the moment, and we'll endeavour to do uh, to to do what we can I in the short term. Thank you, okay, pleasure. Hi, Nigel. Um, Hi. The, the, the Bristol City transfer, or oh, sorry, the penalty time of that penalty clock is running at 431 yeah. days and still running. Yeah. Um, was there any contact with the PGMOL after Swansea? And have you had any contact with Kevin? Well, well we. We always have contact with them. Uh, uh, one of the pro, you know, one of the things that we do, protocols that we do, is is um, fill in uh, reports after games. And and Kevin actually came in a couple of weeks ago to uh, go through some footage with the coaching staff as well. So, you know, we have a very um, Kevin's uh, been very good this season in terms of being available. It, it's it's just a, a, a situation which um, I can't really give you any answers to um, the statistics which you know we are a huge outlier it's a it's a massive anom anomaly um, when you look at it in in graph form it's it's quite scary really um, but uh, yeah it remains a frustration for us because we've we we felt that we've had lots of situations that uh, or events during games which have not gone our way. Yeah, I think Richie was saying that over your reign there have been 30 penalty incidents and he was saying 13 or 14 were, were pretty good shouts and they, they've not gone your way. So what is going on? Is in, I don't know. I, 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 I don't know. I don't know. And I, I, and I, don't, I don't really intend in a press conference to, to um, pour... <laughs> Pour petrol on my own head and get fined again for making um, for making comments about uh, about this as a as yeah as a a situation that w we find to be very very uh, it feels unfair if I'm honest with you and um, but but there again talking on a Thursday before a game is probably not something that. Uh, I want to go into too much detail because it, I, I don't think that is, uh, I don't think that's fair either. You know, what we have to do is is find out, or the or the authorities need to find out what the problem is, um, and uh, yeah, it, it's just something that uh, managers, coaches, players, and officials need to work together to make sure that there is consistency. And I think that is the that's been the biggest problem that that the the interpretation from one week to the next um, appears to be that the, the, there is no clarity and so the, the, the interpretation that um, is it, just too wide just a couple on transfers in the window mm. if I may um, I hear what you were saying earlier but what would your message be to Burnley or any other club you want to submit you and given your league position could you really afford to lose it this month well, it, it, there are always lots of different factors involved in that, and um, players have a price. Um, we we don't really want to lose our best players, um, but having said that, players have a big say in that as well. So it's it's uh, and we we need to facilitate change as well. So uh, providing clubs. Uh, if, if clubs come in with a with a fair offer and it's accepted by the football club, then that's something that we can. That's the point that we work from. What we can't do is, uh, I, and we don't intend to as a club, is to is to uh, try and put people in a situation where they feel that we're actively trying to 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 move our players. We're not trying to do that. We're trying to keep our best players because uh, we're in a, a quite a. Uh, an advanced state, uh, state of transition. You know, we've gone from having a really big squad. We've we've worked really hard to cut the wage bill and meet financial fair play uh, regulations, which, regardless of whether there is a sale, we will meet. So th th there is not a, uh, a necessity um, necessarily from that. But but if we do want to affect change with the squad, then. Uh, if if a price is right for a player, then then those are decisions that have to be made internally for us. But 
as it stands at the moment, the interest that is out there in our players has just been has been quite tentative. So there's, um, the, the, to my knowledge, there have been no no bids made. Um, Bristol City fans are wondering about Alex Scott. Mm. Um, a lot of Premier League clubs seem to be interested. Do you see him staying uh, next month? Yes, certainly hope so. Absolutely. He, I mean, look, he's a player who, I think, at his age as well, uh, benefits from the exposure that he's had over the last two seasons. He's been a regular since he's been in the side. You know, so for for a lad who's um, 19 now, um, come over from Guernsey, he's made he's made a, a, a great strides in his own development. And he's dealt with the, both the physical and mental demands of the championship. He's a, he's a very accomplished performer uh, for his age. And we realise that he's a player that there will be um, interest in, whether that's this window or the next window. Um, but again, for us as a club, what we don't want to do is, is send the message that we're actually actively trying to to sell our best players because that's not the case it's 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 always about balance um, but like I say as well you know players have uh, players can drive it as well themselves these days so you know we we, we want players to be here and want to be here and just finally away from football we've yeah. some interviews about Bristol City becoming more sustainable a uh, project like the um, how much do you and the players buy into that and this goal of making the club you know greener more sustainable well, I mean, I think you can see from the environment they're out. We, we, we uh, yeah, I think we work very, very hard at that. And um, sustainable on lots of different levels, certainly um, sustainable as a football club. Uh, but in terms of our footprint, so to speak, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, it, it's something that I think everybody um, should have a, uh, should be aware of and are, are play their part in it. So. I think we have a, a responsibility of the football club, who's a, a big part of the community, to, to, to play our role in that. Yeah, pleasure. And I would pick up, um, you said it was unfair, you used the word unfair. Yeah. Um, so those decisions that came ultimately, though, I mean, many managers lose their jobs in, in the grand scheme of things. Yeah. Um, what's the point of having those decisions made if you're not going to get the money back? Look, I don't know whether that's. Uh, I, it can happen. Um, you can look back at that retrospectively when managers lose their jobs and things don't go the way. Yeah, fine, but but look, this is a this is something that's over a sustained period. So we're, we're talking at this being 300 and something days, whatever it is, uh, and yeah, I think there's a stat before that that double that. So um, it, it it's just something that doesn't make sense, and, and there's no point me trying to try and explain it because I've got no idea. I've got no idea why why that is the case. Um, so, over to the authorities. I'm afraid. I think they uh, we we try and be as cooperative as possible with um, Kevin and his uh, and his um, his referees. Um, it's not always been easy. I've got to be honest with you. When things don't happen, and it, it just feels as though it's it's just a, a, an ongoing situation, but an ongoing problem. But um, when he came in, you know, it was it was good of him to come in as well. I think it's it's communication like that is badly badly needed. You know, we need to. You know, Howard Webb's going to be taking over. Uh, I don't know exactly when that is, but he will be taking over, and I think there'll be a lot of uh, weight on his shoulders to to affect change. Um, but look. Uh, we need we need the officiating to be uh, consistent and fair, and that's all that we can ever ask for. Um, I wanted to ask if they have received reassurances that they are working on that to improve the consistency. <coughs> well, look, we, uh, and I don't think it's right for me to go into the details of what we talk about when when he came in. But look, that everybody makes mistakes, and we're aware of that. Uh, and and you know, I make mistakes, you make mistakes, we all make mistakes. On a daily basis, and, and um, but the, there's a difference. <laughs> there's a difference between it being an occasional mistake or something that, or it becomes a, a bit of a, uh, a nuisance of a habit to it being 
something that I don't think anybody can explain. And, and I don't know what else to say, really. There's no point in me being overly negative about it. We've got a game coming up, and the, the officials who, who take to the field at the weekend need to be fair for both sides. It's as simple as that. You know, and, and, and so it's not about trying to apply pressure. It's about trying to, be, it's trying to find out what the answers are and make sure that on any given day, whether you're at home or away, um, that there is a that there is fairness in terms of how teams are officiated. It's as simple as that, as far as I'm concerned. Just on the game himself, the away Birmingham three, three set piece goals. Yeah. That they scored. Is that an area that you've been focusing on, working on this this week in training? Well, we've been working on it for a long time, and I think you 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 will have noticed yourself that our uh, we've been better, but we're going to have to be good at the weekend again. You know, there's no, you can't just say, yeah, we've been working at it and, and then job done. It's something that's continual and it's about sharing responsibility. It's about players, um, yeah, committing to defending and, and, and being proactive and instead of being reactive to situations. And, and uh, because of the situation that we're in and we need to, start winning games, it's, it's even more important that players are uh, switched on. You, you said you wanted to get feels then early. To you, what constitutes early? Is, is that, are we still in that period now? Is that moment passed for you? No, that, that's a statement that I, that I would make about any window. You know, so in a summer window, I want it done early so that players can be integrated and you can get work done. You know, so once the window opens, you can get work done on those players so that they're not playing catch-up during pre-season. You want people involved. Likewise, in January, because it's such a short window, um, it makes sense to try and get value for money. Um, but look, it's not about necessarily value for money at the minute. It's about whether we can or can't do them. And as I've already explained, it's uh, we still have the, we're still in a situation where we can't really. Uh, make any movement at the moment. So it, that's where we are. Does that tap into Kadra joining the <coughs> Yeah, I mean that yeah, I mean it, it's a shame but he you know he's a he's a player that we you know that we've had interest in. Um, but there's no point losing any sleep over it because we weren't in a position to move on it. So there we are. Just on um Speak of Big Seven, Chris Martin, um, Tim Close is another one who's yeah. been out to squad originally. What's his position at the moment? Is he available for January? Is he a player that you you would look to to offload this January to free up the wage pool? Yeah, yeah. Any any inquiries for him at the moment? Maybe? Well, again, th those those uh, types of details are, you know, I I think it's best for us to to give you something concrete when it happens rather than get involved in speculation. So, you know, Tim's been in discussion with the club. Yeah. yeah I mean, you know the but Dan Bentley, another one, he's been rumored to be with Stoke, with Stoke this, this week. Is that a deal that if Suits Block comes in, you'll have to seriously consider again to, to create the way? Well, again, it, it depends on what you call a serious offer. So, um, you know, all these, you would be very, very surprised what, what clubs deem to be uh, reasonable offers. So uh, let's put it like this. We will only move players if it's in our interest to do it or if we feel that it's a fair situation. What we don't want to do is leave ourselves short either. You know, we need to be able to... Um, you know, so we, we picked two injuries up last week and we've already talked today about how that affects, um, how it affects the squad. So it doesn't take too much imagina uh, imagination to, to then expand that to what it looks like when, uh, when, you know, when, you, when you pick up more injuries. I mean, we've done exceptionally well this season to keep uh, the squad as available as possible. We really have. And there's a lot of hard work goes into that, both um, with the medical sports science team, also with, with how we scheduled training and, and there's lots of other factors too so and, and the players input in that is massive too they're, they're 
their buy-in to, to what we're trying to, uh, to create. Um, so, look, it, it's whatever I say here, there are going to be situations that will contradict that just because it, it changes so quickly. And, and what we have to do is still keep our mind on on what we are trying to do. We are trying to change the, the squad. It's been, it's, I know it's been frustrating for a lot of people. It has for us internally too, in terms of the, the rate in which we can do it. But it, it's a part of the job. And we've, 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 made, some, we've made some huge changes to, to the financial climate that we're working uh, towards, you know, the wage bill, etc. And we've just got to keep, uh, keep trying to get the best out of what we've got until we can make those changes. Just on the, the two injuries, we yeah. don't know how long Tom Conway will be out for. Does that change the, hopefully not too long, but does that change the focus of where you want to strengthen the side at all? Well, again, it, 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 <laughs> it all depends on what's available as well. It doesn't change, it doesn't change uh, the longer term plan because we know, we know where we want to strengthen and how we want to strengthen. But, you know, when, when you get these... Uh, shifts which happen in the space of one game where two players get injured in four positions yeah it's it it, it does mean that there are, you have to uh, evaluate what the options are if we do need to move on that so i can't give you a, an absolute concrete answer because believe me it is so fluid finally for me there was a report in the city with finley burns the defender is there any truth in that no not that i'm aware of Okay. I do. Uh, you mentioned to the club previously uh, about possible formation change and about how Cal Nason have started out as a winger. Yeah, he did, yeah. Um, you looked comfortable with the field against Swansea at the weekend. Um, with Thomas Callas hopefully soon to return, can you see Nason featuring in the middle more often going forward? Um, Cal will play where we need him to play, basically. So he's, he's, uh, he's quite an accomplished centre back. Yeah, he can play anywhere on the left-hand side. You know, play as a midfield player. So I, I think having players who have the ability to um, to be utilised in different positions is is quite valuable for us, especially with, um, like I say, having limited numbers and having so many young players within the ranks. It's it, you still need experience within the squad. When you mentioned a few weeks back, uh, certain players in Saudi won't get any contracts. Mm. Um, you also mentioned there were several that uh, were so they will be offered a new deal, obviously yeah. happy scientists. Uh, has there been any, any progression on any, any of those deals? No, the, those, those conversations are, are still, I mean, they're internal, they're, 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 they'll, be, they'll be kept private until there's something um, to disclose on that. Um, so no, no real update on, on that regard, yeah. Uh, and just finally, back uh, on Scott, there were rooms that Wolves are, uh, are interested. Do you have any concerns? Well, on that? again, the, 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 there may be lots of clubs who are interested, but whether that equates to it being something of any uh, worthwhile note for us to get involved in is another thing. You, you know, you lads there are, are there to 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 create stories, and and there'll be lots of there'll be lots of information out there. That's generated by third parties, whether that be agents, etc. But um, the only time that really I should really comment is when something is is uh, is, is confirmed club to club, um, and I, I I will do that. I, you know, I won't I won't keep you in the dark if there's anything uh, of note to to report. So until that time, I'm afraid it's the it's a similar answer. Okay. Hi lads. Yeah, very well. What's your name? Uh, Malachi. 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 <coughs> wow. Sounds like a whiskey. <laughs> uh, I just want to quickly touch on Sam Bell. Yeah. That's all right. Um, sure. Obviously, he came on on Sunday. Yeah. That's been great for the 21s this year. Yeah. Um, is a loan still an option for him, or is he important to keep around at the moment, considering the injuries? He he's a player that there was a lot of interest in the summer um, to to take on loan. And our view on that is that, that loan deals um, for players have to be right. And, and I think Sam's, Sam's the type of player and personality that, that has gained more benefit from staying with us. And of course now, 
um, with his good form this year, he will get more opportunities, I'm sure, between now and the end of the season. So uh, it's not really a possibility for him to go out on loan, just because we don't, we didn't feel it was right in the summer, and actually we need, or we think he he can have a very positive contribution between now and the end of the season. Um, and just quickly on Kane Wilson, yeah, uh, back in training yesterday, yeah. Um, is there any chance to well, he was back out in the grass, so he's not involved with the squad training, but um, he's making good progress. He, the type of injury that he, he had um, in his knee is, is one that you've got to give enough time uh, initially for, for that to, uh, for, the, for the bone surface to not recover enough, but, but be, be able to harden back up. And, and and so what's going to be very important for him here on in is that his, he, uh, he maintains the type of individual program that gives him a chance to be to get back on time and hopefully we'll see him within the next month back with us. Um, and Joe Lowe out on loan um, yeah. this week as well. Um, after his debut yeah. um, a couple of months ago, I think it was, yeah. um, that half of football, how important is this loan? Well, I think, look, when, when players make their first team debut and it's a tough experience, I think that's something that none of us really want. Um, but Joe's done really well this year. He's had a good, he's had a good first half of the season with the 21s, uh, captain in the this, this side. He earned his right to be in and around the first team. We think it's a great benefit for him now to go and get some football. OK. Hi Nigel, how are you? I'm very well. And your name? Uh, Harrison. Harrison, right. Good to meet you. <coughs> Keeping with the idea of the under-21, yep. you are here at Clarkson on the bench of the weekend. Yep. What role do you give to him there for the season? Well, both him and Dylan, Kaji, uh, have again made really good progress this year. Um, I think it's been a, a good experience for them to be involved in and around the first team. In an ideal world, uh, for them to get more exposure, I would prefer it if the side was in uh, better form in terms of picking points up. So the, the, the pressure that's put on youngsters is realistic. Um, but I think just because of their own uh, development this season, uh, I think it's a, a another really positive story for, the, for our academy. The, 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 the players who come into the first team environment are physically able to deal with it um, much much better than they were in the past and I think both of them have got bright futures so I can't really give you a definitive answer as to what role they'll play between now and the end of the season but they are in and around the first team pool and hopefully uh, we can develop them even more by exposing them when the time's right. Cool and then you've mentioned the pressure that comes in yeah. Well, look, <coughs> young players. What they, what, the potential that they have to bring is a lack of fear. You know, sometimes experienced players um, can have a bit of baggage, psychological baggage, with them, which can stop them performing. Likewise, uh, young players, they as we've seen with a number of ours who've broken into the first team, have just stepped up there and been able to deal with uh, what is quite a big step up with relative ease, um, or apparently relative ease. But, uh, but you know, it's, you can't just put a player in there and then expect them to have a smooth journey. You know, at some point there'll be a loss of form, at some point there'll be um, disappointments for them. And I think how how we help them manage those disappointments is also a really um, indicator of how far they can go because if they can overcome setbacks the next time that they get involved with the first team or back in the team, you know, hopefully their ability will, will, will see them through. But it's just, it, you know, you can't, you can't draw a straight line so everybody's on the same pathway. It's not, it, it isn't like that. You have to factor in that they're all individuals um, you know they all have their we, we all have our strengths and weaknesses and so 
uh, it's important to bear that in mind with, with the youngsters as well when you are exposing them into pressure situations. Thank you. Pleasure. Okay. Sure.